Hey there, self-care warriors. Welcome back to another episode of Hold My Purse, where we put you at the center of your life with some serious, badass self-care. On this show, we dive deep into stories that inspire, empower, and uplift. I'm your host, Ro, and today we have a remarkable guest joining us. She's a powerhouse in the marketing world, a strategic thinker with a passion for innovation and motivation. Her journey is as captivating as it is inspiring. So grab your favorite drink, sit back, and get ready to be inspired by Heidi Schock. Let's get this party started. Hi, Heidi. Welcome to Hold My Purse, a self-care journey through life. I am so excited to have you on the show today and share with my audience all about being a business entrepreneur and just self-care. Rhonda, I am so excited to be here with you. Thank you so much for this opportunity and to have this conversation with you. Awesome. So I want to dive right in because when you and I uh, met a couple of weeks ago, you were telling me about your story and I just think it's remarkable when people just say, you know what, I'm going to do my own damn thing. And I would love for you to just share that um, with the audience. Absolutely. Uh, it's it's Doing our own damn thing is very scary for many reasons, but yes. let me just share how it got started. So six years ago, I was moving through a divorce and I had prior to my divorce, I had been a stay-at-home mom. So the finances were his responsibility, the home and the kids were mine. So I was heavily involved in my children's world. I was uh, I would, they were young. They were probably around six and seven at the time of our mm-hmm. divorce. And I had been prior to that heavily involved in their school. I was homeroom mom. I was co-chair of the auction committee. And now I found myself needing to provide for myself and my kids to, and my animals. I had probably had five animals at the time oh, and <laughs> I was working on keeping my home. So mm-hmm. I didn't know what I was going to do when I was really scared. So the one thing that I did know and that I connected to was my Why? And what, what I really wanted to create with me and my kids and my family. And my why was I wanted to be home with them. I wanted as little for them to change as possible. There was so much that was going to change mm-hmm. in regardless of how I tried to control the situation. Right. So I didn't want the change for them to happen where I couldn't pick them up. I couldn't drop them off and I wasn't around. So I was like, how can I stay home with them? How can I be home with them and still be able to take them to school, pick them up and still also be there for their activities? So I found coaching online and I looked at at these coaches that were showing up in powerful ways. And I was like, well, that looks easy. Of course I can do that. Oh, I'm going to make so much money. Right, Rhonda? (laughs) Um, I was working two jobs as I was building my business. I still thought this could be easy. Unfortunately, I hit, there was a lot of things along the way that were challenges. One over time, over the first year, year and a half of the divorce, my children needed to move schools. Um, we pulled my daughter into homeschooling and my son w- moved into public school and he was diagnosed with ADHD. So we were navigating that. So mm. there are a lot of things between working two jobs, having a business and navigating all these new challenges that I actually stepped away from my business. But I still was connected to my why, which was I wanted to be home with my kids. So eventually, Mm -hmm. long story short, I did come back to my business. I will tell you, I did not start off as a business strategy coach because that's what I am. I help female entrepreneurs build businesses online. I started off with what I knew, which was health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And I soon quickly discovered I did not like that anymore. The world had changed since I had been in it. I'd been gone from it for about 10 to 15 years. So it had, it had changed greatly. It was very niche down. So I ended up moving mm. into and goal setting work with women. And as they had created and achieved their goals, they wanted to start building their businesses. So that is how my business evolved. So and that's a long answer to your question, but I wanted to show how starting a business and how really you really connecting to your why is so important, no matter what you're trying to create in your life, whether it's a beautiful, healthy relationship whether it's success in your wealth, your finances, or building a business, or in your personal health and wellness journey, really connect with your why and hold true and strong to that. I love that because honestly, last year um, I lost my job and I was like, what am I going to do? But I also knew that I didn't want to go back into the workforce and have any type of negative, toxic um, environments and being a part of that. So I started to dig deep into my why 
Like, what do I want to do? One, to your point, I wanted the flexibility to live my life on my terms. Number two, I wanted to just spread the word that our lives are not meant to be lived in a stressful, chaotic space. Our bodies Mm -hmm. can't handle it. So Mm -hmm. I found my why. So I really hope and encourage people to definitely uh, find their why. But one of the questions I want to ask you, because you were working the two jobs, you had the kids and, you know, all this stuff going on. How did you get started? How did you really just say, you know what, I'm going to get started and get into this to coaching. What, what was that? What did that look like? It was, uh, I found, I found a coach online. I found a mentor mm-hmm. and I dove into mentorship and that's in, in honestly, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It was the wrong, it was the wrong mentorship for me. It was the wrong program, but I took that leap and it was way more expensive for me. It was really out of my comfort zone with the investment mm-hmm. financially. That being said, it may not have been the right program for me, but the coaching was phenomenal. Okay. And no matter what coach you decide on or what direction you take or what program you join, we can always garner so much positivity and value from whatever we're investing in. And I'm a big believer in investing in your future because when you do that, you're going to show up and do the work. You're more likely mm-hmm. to do the work. So How I got started was I found a mentor, I found coaching, and I took the direction. One one important thing about when you're wanting to start a business or doing something scary is being coachable, Mm. um, being able to take direction well. And making sure also, though, with that coaching in that direction, that it, it aligns with your values and it aligns with what is an integrity for you. Make sure that just because there might be a phenomenal coaching coach program out there or mentorship, if it's not aligning with your values or with your mission or your integrity, it's a no. So I, I like to put that out there because for me, not everybody's going to align with me and that's okay. I want people to find the perfect mm-hmm. fit for me, for them, that works mm-hmm. for them. Um, but that was my number one step was finding coaching and then building and going from there. So I'm trying to think what, 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 what in persistence, I would say persistence was mm-hmm. super key for me and persistence is still key for me because when you're building a business and online or growing a business or doing something new, it's really important that you're willing to be open to fall, failing forward because mm. not step you take is going to be the right step, but it's going to be that right step in the moment because it's going to tell you whether you're going in the right direction or not. Mm-hmm. And either way is great because they're both learning lessons. One mm-hmm. day, they're, yes, I'm doing, I'm moving forward in the right direction. I get to keep going. The other one is like, okay, no, this didn't work. Awesome. Now I get to put that to the side and know that I'm one step closer to the right, the right thing for me. Gotcha. Did you experience, because I've I've been experiencing this, did you feel or experience any negative self-talk during that process? Like, and how did you overcome that? Because that's, that's the battle I still have. So I would love to know what you, what you did. All the time. It still creeps up. It's always Mm going to creep up. Like it's always going to creep. It's just a matter of learning how to navigate and flex that muscle and get to understand when that negative self-talk comes up and realize it sooner. Cause I think when we're first getting started, we can dwell in that. And that's the, that's the thing that can really take us down. If we sit in it for a long time, that becomes our mental verbiage and our brain believes whatever we tell it. So Mm -hmm. it's a matter of starting to realize, hey, we're creating this own negative environment or we're creating our own our own our own stuckness and starting to shift that verbiage into how can I okay, who am I to do this? That was my big thing. Who am I to do this? Who am I to do this? Like, why would anybody want to listen to me? Mm -hmm. Right? Divorced mom, newly, newly, newly divorced, trying to hold everything together. Um, am I, am I, you know, trying to figure out how do I want to support people? I can't help people with organization because I am so unorganized myself. I'm like, my life is, look, is chaos to me. So I can't help people there. So really just getting clear on what, like, what am I good at and Mm -hmm. how can I provide value to people and, and also going to people and talking to people who love you, yes, support you and cheer you on. And that is not always your family. And for me, it wasn't my family. For me, it wasn't my family. And it's still not my family in certain Mm -hmm. circumstances. So you get the one thing that I will say is get really clear before you share your vision, before you share your excitement about Mm -hmm. 
going on this journey and um, doing something new. And that's one way of navigating self-talk, negative self-talk, is finding someone who really cheers you on, who really wants to see you successful and going to them and reaching out to them. And when you're ta- having that negative self-talk, like, who am I to do this? Why would anybody want to work with me? Why would anybody listen to me? Um, write those down. Journal around it. And go, mm-hmm. okay. This is, these are my negative, these are my limiting beliefs. These are my, this is my negative self-talk. Now I'm acknowledging it. I'm, I'm bringing it to life. I can put my arm around it and go, okay, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Where's it really coming from? When do, when do I remember the first time that I heard this or the first time, or what are the feelings that is showing coming up for me when I'm processing these words, when I'm talking to Mm -hmm. myself in this way and journaling about it and allowing yourself to actually move through the emotion to the tears are coming, let it flow. Because when you're building a business and we're in like, we need to make money, right? We need to make this successful. We need to keep going and do this. We can be in a very masculine driven role and we're yeah. like going, 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 and we don't allow ourselves to process the emotions. I didn't allow myself to cry for a long time because I mm-hmm. had to keep it all together. I had to show mm-hmm. up perfect. I had to show that, you know what? I'm going to be successful no matter what I think they say. And I'm going to tell you too, when we, and I also believed that like if I show up on camera or I put myself out there on social media, people are going to be like, well, who is she? Like, why I would she? That. Honestly, they're not thinking that. They're so wrapped up in their own lives and they're wrapped up in their yeah. own self talk. I learned years after, had I done this years before, had I put myself out there in a bold way years before, I'd be so much further along, Rhonda, because mm. thinking about me now that now, once I did show up visibly and I did say, you know what, I don't care what anybody thinks, I'm doing this for me and my kids because at the end of the day, my kids are priority, right? This right. isn't. I get one, they get one life with me and I want to make this, I want to show up as a role model for them. Who cares what other people say? So many people came out and they're like, oh my gosh, you're you're doing amazing things. I'm so impressed. I'm so proud of you. And Mm. I I thought they were going to come to me and go, who are you to be doing this? And you know, that was just all you all in my head. So last Saturday, um, I'm going to give a shout out to my daughter's friend, Lily, we were going to dinner. Um, we called the icons and daughters dinner. So the moms and the daughters go out. Um, so we're going to dinner and we we're in the car and she was like, Rhonda, I love your podcast. And I went, really? Oh, that's so sweet. I'm like, she's 20 years old. Oh, that's so sweet. I hope you find it helpful. She was like, yes, it's so good. It's helping me like really dig deep into myself. So I haven't had anyone tell me like, who are you to do this? Or like, you know, it's terrible. I've had really good feedback. Mm-hmm. It's me it's on me like I try to suppress that yeah they'll never tell you that it's our own selves it's our brain mm-hmm. and you're telling us that and it's because of things that have happened to us in our past yeah. the stories we've made up mm-hmm. around people's behaviors and what were the story we're creating in our own mind and, and it's it's crazy it's crazy but it's real right it Rhonda? So real. it's so real it's so and real say like you know what when you're t- when you're talking that way to yourself find your cheerleader and talk to them and help them uplift you and mm-hmm. let them tell you how they see you. Okay. Because we yeah. see ourselves in a much different light than the outside world perceives us. So uh, yeah, Rhonda, keep, you're, su- you're such a bright light and I'm so proud of you too. Like, this is amazing. Oh, thank you. But we know how scary this is. Was, I just started a podcast less than a year ago, so it can be super scary no matter what we're doing. And it doesn't matter what level we are in our business. It doesn't right. matter level we are in our life. If we're always looking to grow and up level, that imposter syndrome, that negative self-talk, that fear is always going to show up because, and I always tell my clients, I'm like, when that imposter syndrome starts creeping in, when that fear shows up, when you're like, who am I to do this? That's the signal that you're moving in the you're right the direction. perfect person to do it. Exactly. That's awesome because you're stepping out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. and you're about to take yourself to the next level. So celebrate that. Put your arm around that fear. Say, thank you for showing up because I know now I'm about to move into my next version of me. Oh, I love that. No, for sure. Um, all right. So I wanted to get into a little bit about lessons. So if you were to tell your younger self, I know you alluded to it a little bit earlier. What are some of the things you wish you had done differently when you started your business? What were some of the lessons? I wish I would have 
not lone wolfed it. I have asked for support sooner. I, yeah, I would have, I wish I would have like allowed people to support, uh, cause I was so scared to ask for support. Cause I found if I felt if I'm asking mm. for support, I'm showing weakness and I couldn't show that, especially in my situation. I needed to show up as strong. I needed to show up as mm. I have it all together. And I knew what I was doing and that was far from the truth. And so I would, I would reach out for support. I would surround myself with community and Mm -hmm. did surround myself with community, but I didn't allow that community to support me. I, I would, I would show up vulnerably. That's another thing I would tap Mm -hmm. into my vulnerability. That was a huge fear for me. That was one of the biggest, even though I felt like the program that I was in wasn't right for me at the time, the coach was spectacular. The coaching was spectacular and it leaned into vulnerability and I could not, I could not step into that. I couldn't, I felt like if I show up vulnerably where I, with where, what I'd gone through or what I was experiencing and we don't want to show up with an open wound. Like if the wound Mm -hmm. is gaping, we don't want to be vulnerable at that moment. Vulnerable with what we are with when it's healed, when that wound Mm -hmm. is healed. Mm-hmm. And I, right, I was going through so much emotionally and so much transition that I didn't even know what I could talk into or how to be bold because I felt like I had to hold it all together. So I, I, if I could go back in time, I would be more vulnerable. I would share my story more and connect with more people and allow that community that I was in, in that coaching program to support me as well and ask for more help. Cause I would have gotten further faster. I would also challenge myself to step through fear. Now, when fear, when my fear shows up, like literally I'll share a story with you. So please do. (laughs) One of the speakers events probably six months ago, and it was promoted all over. Many of you, I'm sure if you knew what I saw, you'd you'd heard of it. And I saw it and it was going to be the following week and Mm -hmm. it was going to be in Miami. So I I needed to sign up and go physically down there. And it was only a week away. And I knew my calendar was full. I had, I had zero bandwidth on my calendar to, to write a speech in order to compete. I was going to compete in a speaking competition. Wow. It's like, and all of a sudden my chest got tight, my throat closed, which is what first happened when I first went live. I, that's an, that's a long, that's a story, a story too. But when Mm. I first, my throat closed. I was challenged to go live in that coaching program because I was staying in the background. So one of the members happily, like luckily she pushed me to, to go live and I, I bawled through the whole live stream. And I got that same feeling when I thought about doing this competition. And I was like, and that feeling, as soon as that feeling showed up in me, I was like, this means you must do it. And I immediately signed up. I didn't, I knew I didn't have time to write the speech. I didn't know how I was going to even practice it before I got down there. I was determined to get through round one. That was my goal. I'm getting through round one, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. All I knew was I have to do this because that all those feelings of fear showed up Mm -hmm. for me when I very first started my business because this was my next cut. I made it through round one. The night before the pro the the event, my business partner sat down with me and we Google docked it. So she was home, I was home, and we were writing out the very first round of the speech. I practiced it on the way down to Miami and I did it and I made it through round one. Had I not stepped through that fear and had I not recognized when that fear showed up and been like, thank you. And yes, I get to lean into this no matter what the outcome is. This is my next step because I know I want bigger. I know I want more. And my one of my goals is to speak on stages. So when this opportunity showed up and that fear kicked in and my body like reacted due to the fear, you know how that happened, Wanda, right? Your body. Oh, yeah. Um, I was like, that's my next cut. And that's what I want to like, I, I hope that that's one of the takeaways from our talk is that when you get the, that emotional reaction or your body tells you that this is scary, our body reacts because it wants to protect us, right? It wants to keep mm-hmm. us safe. So when there's not some saber to tiger chasing us or we're not like imminent, like deadly, like harm, right. When it's not really going to hurt us regarding our, like our livelihood, then that's our, that's our sign that we get to take ourselves to the next level. So I invite you like when that, when those feelings come up, acknowledge it, recognize it, embrace it and say, okay, I'm in. That's so great that you share that. I mean, last year I had to do some public speaking. I used to love it when I was younger, but something happened as I got older, I became, I found myself becoming less confident and Mm -hmm. I did not want to speak. 
but now I want to do a TED talk and I want to get on stage. But last year I went to a hypnotherapist. I was like, I need help because I am freaking out every time I have to present at work. And so I went through this hypnotherapy and I started to visualize myself being on stage. And she gave me little tips and tricks. She was like, rub your hands together because that's a calming because you're in fight or flight mode. And Mm -hmm. that's why you're, you're feeling that way. And I found it to be so, so helpful. And now I'm like, I'm going to do me a freaking TED talk. I'm going to do like you. I want to get on stage. And I'm going to share some stories because I got a lot to talk about and just really just step into it. Like there's no need to be fearful of anything. Like you said, there's no saber tooth tiger following you, but just step out and do it, y'all. I mean, we're here to live. Let's let's live life to the fullest. But, you know, congratulations to you and that you 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 knew what your fear was. You're like, I have this mm-hmm. fear. These are the feelings that's showing up that are showing up for me. And they're they're, they're paralyzing. They can be paralyzing. Mm-hmm. Yes, very much you so. Got support, and that's that's one thing I would have. I said I would have done sooner. Like you asked for support, so congratulations mm-hmm. to you. Because most of us won't do. Many people won't do that. Um, mm-hmm. Many people will be like that shows weakness. But you're like, no, my why? Like I, I get to get my message out there. I'm driven. I have a passion for doing this TED talk. It's one of my. That's like a calling on my heart. Mm-hmm. And now I get to figure out and do everything I can to make sure that I'm setting myself up for success. So that's amazing. And you reached out to somebody and they gave you the tools. So now you have a tool belt full of tools at any moment. So when that fear shows up, you're prepared and ready. And you're like, uh, thank you for showing up. And I got this. Thank you. Goodbye. (laughs) That's how it roll. Um, so now you, you do a lot to help particularly women in setting up their business. Um, can you just share briefly, what you do to help people. Cause I would love for my audience to reach out for to you because I know there's a lot of people in my, my orbit that really mm-hmm. want to do their own thing, but they're working at corporations and they just, they're like, how do I get started? So how could you help someone? Yes. And thank you for asking this because if I can share one tip to get somebody started in this journey, um, I want to, cause 90% of businesses fail. And I don't say that to scare you. I actually say that because I want to change that number. Like this gets mm-hmm. to be this. If you truly want to build a business and, and create the, your dream life for you and your family, then I'm, I'm all in and I will do everything I can to help you. Um, so I help women get started in business through creating their signature virtual events. I have found through my six years of mm-hmm. on this journey that that is the one piece of if you can create your signature virtual event, you can re- rinse and repeat that process over and over and over again. And it's the easiest way to scale your business and the quickest way to build your authority, to create consistent enrolling clients, and to scale your business easily. Now, I do have a money system that we use in place. So we create your signature virtual event. And we also help you with our um, move you through the money system through marketing, because typically when people struggle in building an online business, it has to do with marketing. So we want to get your messaging mm-hmm. dialed in. We want to know who your ideal client is, really get clear on who the, what your who your avatar is, uh, the problem that you solve and the solution that you provide. We create your irresistible got to have an offer. This is going to set you apart mm-hmm. and put you on the map as the person to work with. You're, this is where you're going to learn what your other people are doing in your space and how you can fill the gap to stand out from the crowd with your offer. Then we we work let, teach you how to properly network because your network is your network. So it's, mm-hmm. yes, it's about cons- creating consistent clients, but we also want to create a community of entrepreneurs that you are networking with so you can create collaborations. Collaborate. Mm-hmm. Make make life easy for you. If you can do collaborations, it's an easy way to get in front of other people's audiences, not be able to get in, in front of otherwise. And then enrollment is the E in the money system, which is really create how to easily enroll new clients into your business. So you're not feeling salesy or slimy because I know as as women, we can feel we- weird asking for what is for you, showing up authentically as you. You know, what your quirks make you special. They make you different. Um, the things that about you that are is your secret sauce. Your personal brand is your business brand. So what is it about you that people are going to resonate with you and want to work with you? And that um, that encompasses also sharing your story and your journey, just like we've been talking about. Right. So I have a system for new people, for new entrepreneurs called Business in a Box. And okay. we put all of this together. 
And this is where you get to move through this process. And you, we also bring in the tech because when I worked with new entrepreneurs, I realized that they get overwhelmed and intimidated with tech. So we bring mm. tech into really simple, into a sim- simple trainings. And we tell you exactly what platforms you can use to get started that are simple and low cost, because we want to keep that cost down as much as possible. So if anybody wants to check that out, it's, it's a uh, business in a box academy.com and they can check out what that looks like. That's awesome. I'm sure you can get hit up with a lot of people. Um, Cause I think that's that, that fear and that first step is what holds people back. Um, and if you had someone like you that can coach them through who's done it, that's just, here you go. You're off to the races. Yeah. Um, so cool. All right. So I have one final question. So this podcast is all about unapologetically putting yourself first. If you had to create a boundary that everyone in the world had to follow, what would that be? Oh, that's a good question. A boundary that everybody in the world had to follow. I don't know if this is, yeah, I would say your, my time, your time, Mm -hmm. be on your time because your time is precious. It's the one commodity we cannot get back. That part. Yeah. The one thing we cannot get back, we can make more money Mm -hmm. and, you know, we can, we, but you can never get more time. Never. So having a lack of money, really a non-issue because I can always go make more money. Mm-hmm. But if I, if somebody, if somebody takes my time, I can't get that time back. So really being aware in, 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 in prioritizing your time and being selfish on your time, it's okay to be selfish. So I live by my calendar. Right. Everything was on my calendar, including picking up my kids. So there's no accidental overflow. If I mm-hmm. need to take some self-care, you know, I, I schedule that in. Um, so really just, scheduling everything, the more, the more structure I have, the more freedom I have. So I love that. I love that. I, I, I agree with you hundred percent. And so now, unfortunately I have another question for you because you talked about self care with well, someone as busy as you are. What do you do for your self care? What does your self care routine look like? I don't necessarily have a routine. I, I do. I have a mind to morning thing only because of my schedule. And I say, every time I say morning routine, I cringe because I don't feel like everybody needs to have a morning routine. And I know there's entrepreneurs mm-hmm. out there, gurus or whatever say morning routine. I believe in the routine. You get to have a routine, but it gets to fit in part of the day that works for you. For right. me right now in my, in my, the season I'm in with my children and with taking them to school and all those things, my morning is my time. So I'll get up anywhere between four and five thirty, depending on where I'm at. And I will sit, I will make my coffee. And all my, one of my dogs will come out and get on the couch with me and I will sit and do my gratitude and my gratitude. And I know people talk about gratitude, but my gratitude, I have a journal specifically for it. And I write my current gratitude and I let mm-hmm. it flow. There's no, I don't have any attachment to it. If it's three things, it's three things. If it's 30, it's 30, but I let it flow with the current gratitude. And then it flows into my future gratitude, mm-hmm. but my future gratitude is written as current gratitude. And what I found with that is that as I write my future gratitude with current gratitude, just like, remember you talked about negative self-talk around that mm-hmm. words, like our brain doesn't know the difference. Our, our subconscious doesn't know the difference. The universe, God, whatever you believe in, they don't know the difference. As right. long as you're grateful for it now, it believes mm-hmm. you already have it. So it's just going to, it's just going to swirl things around. I, I love the, I love the term. It's going to swirl things around. It's going to yes. bring your life and bring situations in your life and and organize it to where it makes that happen for you. So I practice future gratitude with many things that happen as that's showing up for me as it's current mm-hmm. and make it happen. And the more you do it, the faster it starts showing up. I love that. Okay, I'm gonna start doing that. I do the journal thing in the morning, but I had not thought about future gratitude. That mm-hmm. is that is an awesome recommendation. Um gratitude, uh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, So now just share with everyone how they can find you, LinkedIn, social, all the things, podcast. Yes. Thank you. I'm everywhere. You can find me on my website, HeidiShock.com. I'm on Instagram, HeidiShockCoaching. Uh, My business profile on Facebook is business as HeidiShockCoaching. You can hit me up on my profile. I have two Facebook uh, groups. uh, Well, One's badass pun entrepreneurs. I don't know if I can say that here, but I know you can totally say it. I I swear all the time I was being good. Two words, entrepreneurs. And now that's a co-ed group. And then we also have a female entrepreneurs and leaders group, which is called female entrepreneurs and leaders. You can find me on 
LinkedIn. You can find me on TikTok and you can find us at Business. And- I love it. All right, y'all hit up Miss Heidi because I know you all have a business in you. Go ahead and get it started and Miss Heidi can take you there. Um, thanks so much again for coming on. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Rhonda. I really appreciate you. Um, can I ask you a question before we go? Sure. Yeah. How can I support you? Ooh, you know, when you were talking about collaboration, I was thinking I would love to figure out what that would look like. I have so many ideas in my head that I need to get out. And frankly, I don't even know where to start. Um, but yeah, if we could if we could chat and and talk about it, I, I think we might be able to do some things that would be amazing if you're I open to that. it. I'm in. Absolutely. All right. Well, sounds good. Well, thank you. Thank you, Rhonda. All right, y'all. Up next, Miss Aria talks about her fun run at school. Hey, Aria. Hey, Mimi. How was school today? Good. Yeah? What yeah. you do in school? The fun run. And what what's a fun run? Um, when the kids run around in circles. Oh, okay. Is that for, like, why do you do that? Can you Do you know what, what it's about? So you can, it's just for fun because the whole school had to do it. Okay. And how did you do? Good. I won the whole challenge. You won the whole challenge? Yeah, I was speeding. You could, you run that fast? Yeah. Do you want to play soccer? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. And I won the soccer game. You won the soccer game? Yeah. You play soccer today in school too? Yeah. Okay. What else you want to tell us about the fun run? Uh, we did a good job. Yeah? Yeah. Did you run with someone or was it like you running like, like was I it a team? With- was it a team or with your class? Yeah, so there's a girl team and a boy team. Uh, okay, now we're getting to the details. I like it. I like it. Did the girls beat the boys? Yeah. Okay, and you were the star runner. Is that what you're telling me? Wow. Now, was it just with your class or were, did other classes run with you? We had to make up a plan. So the girls made up the circle. Uh-huh. And me, and then I figured out the whole plan and we did it. Oh, so you were the leader, huh? <laughs> I like that. Because I was going to go faster than them. Okay. Did everyone come up and give you high fives and hugs? Did y'all like celebrate each other? Did you hug other people, other classmates and say, good job? Did you all celebrate each other? I don't, I think they just celebrated me and Peyton. Oh, Peyton's as fast too, huh? Yeah. She's a little bit fast. Wow. She goes like this. Oh yeah. Okay. And then I go like this. Okay. Man, I wish I would have came and saw it. I hate I missed it. Were their parents there? Yeah. Oh, next time you got to tell me ahead of time. And parents get to bring um, lunch to the kids. And guess what? They get to bring um, the the kids to the playground. And they get to um, watch the game um, at our playground because we had a challenge of the monkey bars. Really? Uh Uh-huh. Wow. And then... We can take the kids home okay. and do a art experiment. Okay. Now, was a fun run this morning or this afternoon? This morning. Oh, okay. It was after lunch. After lunch? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you had a good fun run. Is there anything else you want to share? No. No? no. Okay. Well, thanks for coming on and talking about your fun run. I love you. I love you, too. Bye, bye, y'all. Bye. And there you have it, friends. Another episode of Hold My Purse filled with incredible insights and inspiration. Heidi's journey has certainly left an impression on all of us. We've learned firsthand the power of perseverance, the importance of embracing change, and the undeniable impact of strategic leadership. Heidi's experiences remind us that every challenge is an opportunity for growth and every setback is a chance to rise stronger. As we wrap up today's episode, I encourage you to reflect on your own journey. What opportunities lie ahead? What dreams are waiting to be pursued? Remember, the path to success may not always be easy, but with determination and vision, Anything is possible.
Thank you for joining us on this self-care mission. And um, a special thanks to Heidi for sharing her wisdom with us. Y'all, keep dreaming, keep believing, and work towards your goals. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with your friends. This isn't just a podcast. It's, um, it's a movement. So together, let's build a tribe of self-care warriors who own their lives and live it to the fullest. Remember, let self-care be your ride-or-die companion on this wild journey we call life. Slay those challenges, conquer those obstacles, and as always, keep your self-care purse within arm's reach. Until next time, my fabulous friends, remember to put yourself first and to hold my purse. Peace.